Welcome to the Warriors of Grace podcast, hosted by Dave Jenkins. Warriors of Grace is about helping men from generation to generation become gospel men in private, in the home, in the church, and in public through the Word of God. Now for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. Well, welcome back to the Warriors of Grace podcast, men. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for this show. And on today's episode, we're going to conclude our series, Navigating the Seasons of Life, talking about learning to navigate difficult people and situations. Now, many of these lessons that I'm going to talk about today with you, they're, they're ones that I've learned through a lot of prayer. Some I've learned by observations. Others come from godly saints that have invested in my life. So here's the points. Difficult people expose our rough edges. Difficult people expose weakness in our theology. Difficult people hurt others to get attention from other people. Difficult people require growth in the grace of God. And dealing with difficult people is hard, and one shouldn't take their words to heart. First, dealing with difficult people exposes our rough edges. Well, consider Joe at your workplace, men. He has a medical issue that causes him to cough a lot. His coughing causes you to be aggravated at him. Sally is a very sweet person, but you don't like the sound of her voice. She sounds very raspy when she talks, and that makes you cringe every time you hear it. And there are thousands of examples that we could give on just this point alone. Some of these may not be aggravating you at all, but in my experience, it's often the small things that irritate people the most. This is true whether it's in the workplace, whether it's church or something else. Difficult people help show us where we need to grow. And so rather than fighting against these people, hold on to grudges, or even be bitter towards them, we need to love them. We need to realize that these are sandpaper people, and we need them to smooth off our rough edges. These people help us to develop a posture of humility rather than an attitude of superiority. Our bad attitude towards people is a reflection of our doctrine of the image of God and man. It's one thing to say so-and-so is a nice person, but it's another thing to say so-and-so did this and that and this and oh my gosh, did you see what they did today? On on the one hand, you, you might still think they're a nice person, but over time, if you don't address your bad attitude, you're going to grow bitter, you're going to grow cold, and you're even going to be angry at that person. And rather than allowing this to happen, let me encourage you to embrace that difficult person in your life. Second, difficult people expose weakness in your theology. Oftentimes we view difficult people as objects to be avoided rather than real people in need of help and answers. In fact, God places those difficult people in our lives for a reason. And that difficult person in your life might be exposing your lack of genuine love and concern for others. Discipleship problems are always doctrinal problems. And the next time you deal with a difficult person who asks a lot of questions, who irritates you, be sure to be slow to speak, quick to listen, ask lots of clarifying questions, and speak gently and truthfully to that person. This is going to show that person that you care for them, while also helping them to see the grace of God at work in your own life. Third, difficult people hurt others to get attention from other people. The difficult person in your life, they want attention, your attention. They may want to bring you down to their level. They, they may think you're a hypocrite. Well, are you? Do you live a double life behind closed doors? Do people know you? Or do you hold people at arm's length? That difficult person in your life who is hurting you wants attention because they're hurting. You need to realize that you have an opportunity to befriend them for the purpose of imparting God's grace to them. God places people like this in your life to rub the rough edges off of your life and to develop understanding, your understanding of who he is so that you'll love others with his love. And when you do that, difficult people become a blessing to help you grow in grace, not a hindrance to be avoided. Let me just say one other thing on that particular point. If you're finding it particularly hard to deal with a difficult person, I want to ask you, how are you doing at utilizing the means of grace. How are you doing it? Reading your Bible, studying your Bible. How are you doing it? Praying. Uh, These kind of questions, especially praying for the other person. Um, In my own life, I've noticed that difficult person becomes less and less and less difficult because 
uh, the Lord by the Spirit is addressing difficulty in my own heart and life. And he's changing me. He's transforming me as I'm praying about that difficult situation in per- person. And this kind of leads into the fourth point. Difficult people require growth in the grace of God. You know, don't get me wrong here or misunderstand me. Difficult people are hard to deal with. They require a lot of prayer. They require a lot of patience. They require a lot of humility. And all of that is for our good. When we understand that the Christian life is about growing in and being used by God, we can clearly see our need for the grace of God. We don't graduate from our need of the grace of God. We are always in need of it. We have a great need of the grace of God and a great Christ who meets our need. And when we recognize our need for grace by growing in our walk from God, that helps us. Only from this perspective can we deal with difficult people. We will only be patient and kind with that person who irritates us all the time if we're growing in the grace of God. This is why I often, as I mentioned earlier, I pray for the person I'm struggling to deal with. And when I do this, what happens towards what happens with me is my perspective towards that person begins to change. In fact, it's amazing how this happens because over time what occurs is I begin to have a genuine love for that person because God has placed that love in my own heart for that person. I'm then able to minister to that person, build a friendship with them, speak truthfully to them in love about my concerns, my thoughts, my feelings about things going on in my own life or that I see going on in theirs. By recognizing our need for God's grace, we will be able to deal with difficult people in a healthy, productive way. That's uh, the last one on that list is still something that I'm honestly growing in, men. And it's likely yours as well. If you're a sensitive, caring uh, people person, this is going to mean an area of growth for you for a long time as it is for me. Our last point is dealing with difficult people is hard. And one shouldn't take their words to heart. Here we need to realize that difficult people are likely hurting people who use their words in inappropriate ways to lash out at others so they feel better about themselves. The only thing you can do is not permit them to have any power over you. When they speak harmful words, you speak the truth of God's word. And when this person continues to spew their ugliness, instead of indulging them, walk away. If they continue, tell them... uh, how what they say makes you feel. Be specific when you do this and tell them, I don't like it when you call me such and such name because that makes me feel this way and tell them how you feel by addressing their specific behavior and how it makes you feel. You're helping them uh, to see how their actions affect you and most likely others. Finally, all of what I said here today is about difficult people. It's because we care about people. In fact, the reason that we care about others is because Jesus truly cares for us. He wants to have a relationship with us. After all, he bled and died in our place and for our sin and to offer the forgiveness of our sins to his people now with new life through his resurrection. He not only uh, has done all of what I'm talking about here, he even now lives to make intercession for us as our high priest, intercessor, intercessor, and the mediator of the new covenant. Jesus is still yet returning to rule and reign over the throne of King David, and yet now he empowers his people and fills them with his spirit so that they can, in increasingly measure, be empowered by the spirit to make much of Jesus. You know, we're dealing with difficult and challenging times. Difficult people are all around us. They are not a burden, nor are they an obstacle to overcome. Difficult people are an opportunity for us as Christians to show the world that we take seriously the love of God, that we have believed and now carry this love onward into the most difficult places to the most challenging people in the world. And so let's carry forth the message of the cross and the resurrection to all peoples, for all for the praise of the one in Jesus who has saved us and won for us such a great salvation. To him be glory and dominion and power forever. Amen. In fact, dealing with difficult people in a Christ-like manner might be one of the most challenging and difficult ways to live out the gospel. Difficult because this requires patience. It's been said that if you pray for patience, God will indulge you with opportunities to develop. It's this for this reason that God puts difficult people in our paths. They are the sound paper we, that we need uh, to polish off the rough edges of our lives. And so I have six observations about for further observations about dealing with difficult people. 
And the first point is dealing with difficult people provides fresh opportunities to display humility. When John Calvin was asked to define the Christian life, he said three times that the Christian life was humility, humility, and humility. Proverbs 3.34 says, Towards the scorners he is scornful, but to the humble he gives favor. James 4.6 says, But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5.6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. You see, when you love someone who annoys you, you are lowering your own estimation of yourself and exalting a brother or sister in the Lord. Second, difficult people expose our Latin pride. That's because following Christ involves submission to the authority, inspiration, inerrancy, and sufficiency of Scripture. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. You see, difficult people test this theory and often expose our own idolatry of self. The feelings we have for those we don't like reveal our selfishness and pride. And so in every relationship struggle, we have to ask ourselves, are we going to exalt ourselves as ultimate, or will we come under the authority of the Word of God and thus reach out in love to those we may not like? Third, difficult people, they force us to our knees in prayer. This is what I have especially tried to employ when I'm forced to engage with a person who may be difficult. First, I need to make sure my heart is right with God. Have I repented of my sin? Have I confessed it to the Lord? This is going to eliminate a lot of conflict. Second, I have found it wise to get some godly counsel from a godly friend or a mentor, as Proverbs 11, 14 says. Third, I pray for the person. Fourth, sandwich your truth-telling in love. Finally, be quick to listen to the person's response and slow to interact with their response. Fourth, be willing to hear criticism without defensiveness. James 1.19 is applicable in relationship when it says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. You see, proud people are quick to speak, but slow to listen. Humble people endeavor to listen well. This demonstrates love and it shows you care about what they're saying. It also provides an opportunity for you to speak into that person's life. You see, dealing with difficult people point out weakness in our own lives. When criticized, don't respond negatively, but instead thank that person for sharing their perspective. Humility isn't being a know-it-all. Humility is a lifelong process of admitting what we don't know and growing in grace. Sixth, difficult people help us to love the Lord. This is really important as we're praying for that difficult person. We're asking the Lord to help us to love him and to love other people. That's because instead of viewing them as people who, who we want to argue, we need to ask the Lord to help us to see them through the eyes of Jesus. And this helps because it helps change our perspective from focus on my problem with them to how does the Lord see this situation? How does scripture speak about this? You know, there was a man in my Bible study when we lived, my wife and I lived in Idaho at our local church there. He and I had multiple disagreements, and those disagreements were often not pleasant. But one of my pastors uh, at the time, he challenged me. He started, he challenged me, pray for this man. And over time, God changed my heart towards this man. And instead of viewing him as someone who questions what I have to say, I, I began to see his additions to the conversation as a means to help the conversation. And instead of being at odds with each other, we now... Uh, through the Lord's work in our lives, and this gentleman as well would say this as well, we get along well because the Lord has changed both of our hearts towards each other and we get along with each other well. You see, we need to view difficult people not as a hindrance to ministry, but as an opportunity to grow in grace. Difficult people are sandpaper people who may rub us the wrong way, but are, are the ones God wants to use in our lives to shape us and mold us into the man he wants us to become. And so, men, if you have somebody who is particularly difficult in your own life, I'm hoping that this episode will help you to deal with that difficult person because it starts that difficult person is not the other person. It's the person staring at you in the mirror, which is you. More than helping you to deal with that other person who is difficult, these principles that we've talked about today are going to help you to address difficulty in your own life. And that's going to help you to grow. It's going to help you to grow in the grace of God so that you can love that difficult person in your life. 
through the eyes of our chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. Well, men, we've covered a lot of ground in this Navigating the Seasons of Life series. These are topics and issues that I hope have been helpful for you to consider for your life and godliness. And now I want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of Warriors of Grace. Until next week, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to the Warriors of Grace podcast. If you enjoyed the show today, please subscribe, leave a rating on the app, and share our episode with your friends and family. If you want to, you can follow us on Instagram at Servants of Grace, on Twitter at Servants of Grace, or search Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find our show on the front page of the website, servantsofgrace.org.